Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. It's nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well and enjoying your weekend so far. This is the preview of West Ham's 12th away game of the 23 24 Premier League season, where we travel northwest to Salford to take on Manchester United at Old Trafford this Sunday afternoon, or aka tomorrow, for a two o'clock kickoff live on Sky Sports. As always, guys, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor, 3Retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of of their website where you can purchase some really nice retro gear guys as you can see from the animation that's up here along with track jackets polo shirts sweatshirts and t-shirts made by admiral and umbro so go check those out any purchases you make through the link in the description below the commission that the channel would normally be getting as i always say i'll be sending on to these guys here iron supporting food banks they're based in the newham area and they're helping those in the newham area and the essex county and further afield for that matter as they are currently supporting 39 separate food banks as of the time of this recording so guys go Go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt. You'll be saving yourself a few quid in comparison to your respective club shop and you'll be helping those the less fortunate than you and I. So as always, guys, put your comments in the comments section below. I remembered to say it at the start of this video this time round. I usually say it at the end for some random reason. There's going to be timestamps in the description, so if you can, by all means, please do stick around and hear as much as you can. Otherwise, if you haven't got that, that much time, then by all means, please do jump around to the sections that you want to listen to. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the officials. As always, the referee for this game is Andy Madley. His assistants are Richard West and Nick Hopton. The fourth official is Rob Jones. On VAR, we have Chris Kavanagh, and his assistant is Stuart Burt. Now, we've got issue with Kavanagh going back quite a few games, to be honest with you, but other than that, I'm still worried because it's on telly. You know, we had crap at the weekend. So I had crap decisions on Thursday or being on TNT. And it's going to be live on Sky Sports. So brace yourselves, guys. That's all I can say. Now, our last six away trips to Old Trafford shows we've won none, drawn one, lost five in the Premier League, scoring two and conceding ten. Moyes' away record as an opposition manager at Old Trafford in the Premier League isn't much better either. He's won none of them. He's drawn four times and lost 15. Man United are one point behind us, seventh in the table, after 22 games with 11 wins, two draws and nine losses, scoring 28 and conceding 32 so the mathematicians out there they're on a minus four goal difference on 35 points now they are the only team in the top 10 with a minus goal difference sounds like Huddersfield in the champ in the championship when they got relegated when they got promoted doesn't it eh? <laughs> genuinely that's bonkers how can a team be in the top 10 and on a minus goal difference going into February it's crazy. It really, really is crazy. But anyway, there and even that was because of that. Was it four three victory over Wolves? So if it wasn't that high a goal scoring difference, you know, granted they won it one nil in terms in terms of that. But it's yeah, it's bad. It's bonkers. And Man United are a shadow still. Ten eleven years after Moyes was appointed after Lee, after Ferguson left they're still a shadow of themselves but anyway their home form so far in the Premier League shows they've won six drawn once and lost four scoring 15 goals and conceding 18 so three of the minus four goal differences um, they're on at the minute have come from home now the last five home games in the Premier League show they've won three times drawn once and lost once they have a 27 man squad into comparison to our now 21 man squad in terms of Ben Rama going out on loan for the rest of the season and Fournells making his move his permanent move over to Real Betis if you haven't seen the January transfer video that I did the roundup of it then go check it out up here now, since the start of the season, their strengths and weaknesses have changed slightly. They are they are now very strong at coming back from losing positions. They are still strong at protecting the lead. They have improved, but they are as they are now weak. This is they were very weak at the start of the season, but they are now weak at defending set pieces as well as being weak at defending counter attacks, aerial duels, and finishing scoring chances. And they are now very weak at of, of uh, avoiding the offside trap. So there is quite a lot in there that if David Moyes gets his squad rotation and picks the right starting 11 this time around with the right formation, which we'll go on to when we talk about the starting 11, in comparison to Thursday, 
we can exploit those weaknesses. We genuinely, genuinely can. Now, in terms of Man United injuries, Martial is out until the end of March from looks like he's recovering from groin surgery that happened last week. Uh, Malakia, I think he pronounced it, or Malachia, depends on your pronunciation, is out for another week from his knee injury, as is Mason Mount with his calf injury. Lindelof is 25% chance of returning tomorrow as he's back from training from a groin injury. Sorry, back to training, I should say, from a groin injury. Wambasaka is also 25% chance of returning uh, due to a knock that he picked up recently. Amrabat is fully fit, as is Martinez, um, fully fit as well. Martinez is returning from a foot injury. So it looks like, to a degree, massively under pressure, Ten Hag is... Got a, sorry, has got a lot of options. There's a lot of players he can pick that are going to get him a result, as do we. But we'll talk about that again in a minute. Now, players to look out for, we know most of them. But to be honest with you guys, I wanted to give you a bit more information than most of us know, because you may not know this information. The highest goal scorer at home so far this season is Scott McTominay with four goals. He is weak at passing and discipline, and he commits fouls often. Their highest assister is Marcus Rashford with two assists and one goal. He likes to dribble. He's a very much a counter-attack threat, as we know. He likes to cut inside and play long balls. He doesn't dive into tackles, and he is weak at helping out with the defensive contributions. Now, Harry, Harry Maguire is there, and no surprise here, is their highest aerial duel winner at home, and he likes to play long balls. He's very strong at blocking the ball, strong at ball interceptions, as well as aerial duels, as we just mentioned. But, and this is the difference, why I'm not really sure why David Moyes was trying to bring him in on, in the summer. He is weak at tackling for a centre-back, doesn't dive into tackles as a centre-back, and commits fouls often as a centre-back. Guys, genuinely, put your comments in the comment section below. How can that make sense that a manager of David Moyes' pedigree, for lack of a way, way, better way of putting it, would want to go to a player who cannot tackle, who gives away fouls, and doesn't... Do you know what I mean? It's just It makes absolutely no sense, and I'm glad we didn't do it, to be honest with you. And Luke Shaw is another player I think we need to be looking out for. The left back, he is strong at aerial duels as well. Crossing and holding onto the ball, passing and key passes and blocking the ball, but he is also weak at discipline. Their goal scorer, Onana, is strong at concentration, reflex saves, and saving close-range shots. Um, as I say, we can go into other players, guys, but there's no point because we know most of their strengths and weaknesses anyway. Now, turning to West Ham is good news from our point of view, not so much from Morocco because Agued is should be back now from Africa Cup of Nations. Soufal is now back from his suspension after the two yellows against Sheffield United. Pakatar still going to be out. Um... But yeah, guys, I want to apologise. As I said yesterday, I want to apologise for my very lacklustre full-time thoughts Bournemouth video. I did majority of what I said was true, and I have heard other people have been saying the same thing that we, you know, there should have been three or four goals scored scored before half time, mostly for Bournemouth. Both goalkeepers played an absolute worldies; they really did. Um, you know, Ariola made some great saves. How Phillips is, how sorry, how Neto um, saved Phillips's attempt. It would have been brilliant for him to get a a goal on his debut to help counteract it shall we say from that mistake that Zuma put him in um, as well for that matter but yeah it's, it's it, it wasn't good enough on th on Thursday night and I do generally think that's because as, as I hinted at earlier the, the, the formations that Moyes has been using you know you uh, he went back to the 4-2-3-1. Now, as you guys know, the formation that I do for the starting eleven, which we'll talk about in a second, is very much a um, is very much a, a bastardized 4-1-4-1. It kind of slips into the 4-2-3-1 at the same point, but you can you can set it up in a 4-1-4-1 formation. You can set it up in a 4-5-1 if you wished. Um, so I'm glad from that point of view that we've got players that we can actually put into different positions. <clears throat> for a certain degree, you know, War Prowse is not a left winger in any shape or form. He hasn't got the pace for that. He's he's quick, but he's not quick enough to to do that. He's quick when you need him to go box to box. You know, I, I, other other than the, other than the mistake that Phillips made, I thought he had a good. I had thought he had a good debut. As I say, if he scored that goal, that's a completely different game. 
really is against against Bournemouth. But guys, this is the starting eleven that I want to see David Moyes put out. I, now, I'm not predicting that he's going to do this in any shape or form. And guys, as always, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking on this. But I don't think Moyes is going to do this. But if he doesn't, he's a dick, quite frankly. He's an idiot for not doing this. And this is the starting eleven that I feel that we should be putting out against <clears throat> against Man United, especially bearing in mind we've got a week ahead of, you know, we've got, what was it, Sheffield United and Brentford after Arsenal next weekend. Ariola in goal, with a back four of Soufal, Mavropanos, Agued and Emerson. Alvarez in the hole, sitting behind Phillips, supporting Kudus, Ward, Prowse and Cornet in midfield, with Bowen up front. So thank you very much for your time, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. But as I say, put your comments in the comment section below. Please do like, share and subscribe to let me know that you're enjoying this video um, as well for that matter. We, you know, we've had loads of people, almost two thirds of the people that have been watching this channel over the last month, close to 2,000 people, if I remember, or 2,000 views, if I remember correctly. Even if half of you don't, even the half of you subscribe, we're looking at seven, eight hundred. We're only thirty-six away from getting to two thousand five hundred by the end of the season. Come on, guys! I know you enjoy the content, so put your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Share it on all your social media platforms. If you want to follow the channel on social media as well, mostly for advertising of the videos coming up. Um, but I'm I'm trying my best to to make new content for stuff for Instagram. Uh, Twitter, but it's just really difficult because I'm just not getting the engagement, guys. I really need your support. So please do like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for the watch along for the, the game itself. We'll be live from 10 to 2. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Take care, and I'll see you very soon. All the best now.